what I eat in a day on a raw carnivore diet. Today we are going to focus on obtaining all of the vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids that our body needs through high quality, nutrient dense animal foods, incorporating indigenous dieting principles of raw food, fermented food, as well as some cooked food. So let me show you guys what we're gonna have today. On the left here, I have some chuck roll. This is going to be the bulk of the protein calories as well as the mass that we are having in our meal today. The organ meats and the fat that we are going to be eating are far less volume than the chuck roll is going to be in regards to digestive capacity. In this dish right here, I have some pork brains, some chicken liver, as well as some beef testicles. Uh, the main purpose of the brains is omega-3, overall fat-soluble vitamin intake, liver, incredibly high in vitamin A, as well as overall vitamins. And then we have the testicles. This is for extra zinc uh, to balance out the copper in the liver. Uh, I might even take a zinc supplement with this. This is some very high quality yellowish orange beef fat that has been fermenting in my fridge for about five months. Uh, so this is essentially going to be like cheese. And we're gonna eat this first uh, as a kind of gut bacteria and vitamin K2 supplement. So first things first, I'm gonna take this chuck steak out to the grill and we're going to get some flavor on each side. The second I was about to come outside, it started pouring. Uh, so I'm gonna throw this steak on the grill and we're gonna leave it for maybe a minute or two on each side. While the steak is grilling outside, I'm going to have the fat. And the reason I eat the fat first is one, so it's the first thing in my stomach. That way the rest of the food I eat kind of pushes it down uh, to repopulate that gut bacteria. And two is that fat is very satiating. It will help me gauge my appetite for the remainder of the meal. The organ meats and stuff, I usually save to like the middle to the end of the meal. I don't want, you know, my gut immediately absorbing all of these nutrients. I want them to be kind of churning with the meat and evenly distributed. That being said, this stuff has been sitting, as I said, in my fridge for quite a few months and I'm not too excited to open this. Oh man, this is like, this is like pure rancidity. This is just, I don't even want to touch this without gloves on. It smells like, it smells like cheese, like, well, really, really stinky cheese. So the fat is like, it's really soft, it's orange colored. This fermented fat is a food that we've eaten thousands and thousands and thousands of you know, years, and it's played a key role in the human diet. When a food ferments, the vitamin K2 content raises, you get some beneficial bacteria, but it all depends on the initial quality of the food. You know, there are a lot of high quality raw cheeses out there, cured meats, uh, that all fit under this category to some degree. So there are certainly more approachable foods than letting a bag of fat rot in your refrigerator. I've never had high meat that was this old. And I've never had high meat that was from fat that was this good of a quality. And this is, this is really enjoyable. It's like eating cheese. I think my diet has been lacking vitamin K2 lately. So that might be why. It tastes really good to me right now. I'm just gonna go check on the steak and flip it over. Steak looks good, maybe a few more minutes on the other side. I'm actually really liking this. I'm gonna take out another piece of this. Oh man, it's like purely rancid. I'm gonna put salt on this one. I think I'll, I think I'll like it a bit more with salt on it. Again, pure funk. If you ever wondered why humans like yogurt and cheese so much, this is why. I mean, I mean, yeah, the best way to describe this is a stinky cheese. I'm just gonna have a few more pieces. These are like really yellow and orange. Wow. That bite, soft yellow orange fat, fermented, might be one of the best things I've ever tasted. 
So I'm gonna wrap this back up in another bag for tomorrow or well in a day or two from now So these indigenous groups consumed high meat and fermented meat every day So this was like a ritual like at one part of the year where the harvest was plentiful They would store the meat or the fat like buried underground somewhere and let it ferment for a very long period of time in the hot weather though like in Africa the meat was fermented for a week or two in the Sun so high meat does not have to be you know three four five six months old in a fridge it could be a shorter period of time in a hotter temperature at least that's what I've observed and read in several books and although they ate it every day the amount seemed to be in more of like a snack or dessert like manner I think anywhere between 50 grams and 100 grams of this high or fermented meat would be plenty to get your vitamin K2 to get your beneficial bacteria on the topic of what type of meat to ferment you know you could do muscle meat you could do liver but I think that fat is the king of high meat and if you're not fermenting fat I wouldn't bother fermenting other things you know the amount of bacteria and the benefits to me fat is key here you know the way it tastes uh, the way it ferments all of these things indicate that we are meant to eat rotten fat not necessarily the protein or the organs so I'm gonna take my steak off the grill and we'll start chowing down I know there are some of you out there that are gonna be like Frank you're not a raw carnivore you cook the steak but let me show you the cooking temperature on the inside of this meat this meat is completely raw on the inside there is a slight sear and crust on the outside and I actually cook this a lot more than I usually do so I would say my diet is 80 to 90 percent raw sometimes even higher like yesterday I went completely raw but I found that my body always craves cooked food and my body always craves salt I don't think these things are really too anecdotal uh, there are some people that can tolerate a lower salt intake but for the most part I don't think there are humans that can thrive on a completely raw animal food diet without dairy that is if you're able to tolerate and consume dairy uh, that creates an artificial source of calories that's higher than we see in muscle meat and fat so raw carnivore diet without dairy without eggs difficult to do Sometimes I, I like salting my steak an hour ahead of time. You know, that's usually if I want it to taste good. Uh, other than that, I'll just put some salt on as I'm eating it. I make sure to chew my food very well. Fat, you don't really have to chew because fat emulsifies in your stomach with bile and lipase but protein you want to chew it and break it down as much as possible to increase the surface area I'm gonna be honest the chuck steak isn't that good this is a very freshly slaughtered animal the fresher the animal the more mild the flavor so when I taste this beef it doesn't have much flavor to it you know if this steak was to sit another two or three weeks in my fridge then yeah it would it would start developing more flavor same thing with the organs same thing with the testicles the fresher the meat is the more mild the less flavorful it will be so I'm starting to get a little full and now I'm going to essentially choke down my organ meats and my offal as we said chicken liver incredibly high in vitamin A high in B12 all the fat soluble vitamins excellent source pork brains omega-3 you don't need a lot of omega-3 every day and even even this amount of pork brains you probably have this twice a week you're good to go you know I really do enjoy chicken livers like pan seared with salt on them but I've just been keeping my liver intake consistent lately uh, maybe like one small chicken liver every day and chicken livers are still pretty good raw without salt on them very mild creamy and then we have some beef testicles that I diced up this is to balance the zinc to copper ratio as liver is high in copper not too enjoyable to be honest that's why I usually just swallow this down you know those animals that just swallow their food whole 
It seems like they don't really enjoy their food, do they? Whereas humans kind of like chew and enjoy things. Hey, I don't know, maybe, maybe fish do enjoy swallowing other fish whole, who knows? I'm gonna work my way through the rest of this chuck steak. Probably not gonna finish all of it. We already got our fat in, we got our protein in, all of our micronutrients. Technically don't need anything else for the day, uh, but I will see you guys later. Maybe we'll have some more meat. I feel pretty good despite that being a fairly high volume meal. Uh, I'm gonna catch up on some work I have to do for Frankie's Naturals, and then I might go to the track before I go to the gym later. So I'm gonna try to stay active, stay moving, you know, keep my gut motility high. I caught up on some work I had to do, and I think I'm gonna have a meal later after I go to the gym. Uh, so I took out some beef belly here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this in half, leave it out, and let it get to room temperature. So when I go to cook it later, it's nice and warm and, and it cooks a little bit quicker as opposed to being cold in the middle. Uh, we still have that leftover chuck roll from earlier, but I think I'm gonna save that for tomorrow because it's pretty lean and I don't really feel like taking out some extra fat for this meal. The beef belly essentially has a perfect fat ratio, uh, so you don't have to really consume anything else for the meal and it's nice and easy to prepare. I'm just gonna cut it into strips and throw it on the grill later. I cut up the beef belly and I salted it. When I come back, it'll be nice, seasoned, and ready to go. Hey Jeannie, you wanna go to the gym? I don't have any makeup on, what the heck, Frank, are you? You wanna go to the gym, Jeannie? You okay with going to the gym? I am tired. I did an internship today. Okay, so every single time I ask her if she wants to go to the gym, and I take her just about every day anyway, she says she's tired. I expected that since she was on camera, she wouldn't say she's tired, but she still gave me the excuse. But that's too bad because we're going to the gym, Gina. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, there's only one gym by me that I can really go to, and it's super expensive. It's like $130 a month. Uh, so the other gym is cheap. It's like $30 a month, except it's so dirty and filthy, they don't clean it. Every time I go there, I get really, really sick. Uh, like sick for like two weeks. So uh, that's not even an option. And I feel kind of weird spending more per year on a gym than my car costs. Uh, that being said, I gotta fit the part a little bit. I usually bring like a bottle of Pellegrino uh, to work out with. Uh, that's because I'm usually too lazy to fill up. Uh, bottles of water every day with reverse osmosis water and because I enjoy the Pellegrino I usually keep a case in my car anyway for emergency stuff so always want to stay hydrated with high quality water at the gym uh, helps athletic performance I'm just gonna do some cardio maybe do some light weight training and uh, then we're gonna head home do a live stream so I'll probably see you guys around 8 15 8 30 to do the second meal since it's not raining anymore I'll show you guys the grill setup this is just a Weber spirit I think the mile number is 210 or something uh, pretty cheap, uh, not that great of a grill, uh, but it gets the job done. Propane, what I do is I turn the knobs off, turn the gas on. I let the gas build up in the line for maybe like 10, 20 seconds. I put some firewood over a steel rack. And then when I turn the burners on, uh, the gas lights really easily uh, with the, whatever this is called, the igniter. Because the gas built up in the line. And then within a few minutes, we will have a hot wood fire uh, that will give a lot of flavor to our steak or meat and cook the meat very quickly. This is the beef belly that we salted about an hour and a half ago. We're just going to throw it on the grill for maybe a minute or two on each side. Uh, since the beef belly is so fatty, it browns very easily. And we actually have a little critter joining us today. Uh, maybe he'll enjoy some of the meat before we throw it in the fire. Uh, but who knows? Maybe not. The nice thing about the beef belly is since it's so fatty, I don't really have to wait for the grill to heat up that much because this is going to start flaring up very quickly. I'm sure some of you guys have put like pure fat on the grill or some type of oil on the grill. And you'll notice how quickly it flares up. Ever since I started cooking meat over a wood fire, I've never really been able to go back to any other cooking method. Uh, oddly enough, I kind of like boiled meat a little bit, but I don't really like pan seared meat anymore. And, you know, especially broiled steaks in the oven, I don't really like that either. What I do like is a nice prime rib roast. Uh, you can do that pretty well as well. I guess that's a testament to like the more natural and the more primal the cooking method 
you know, if it's something we could have replicated in, in that indigenous environment, it makes sense that it tastes good. You know, you know, I feel like grilling in America is this big thing, you know, where you gotta like heat up the grill for 10, 15 minutes and then grill for 15, 20 minutes. But I, I never spend more than 10 minutes cooking every single day from heating up the grill to the actual cooking of the meat. And it's even less time invested if you actually wait for, you know, the fire to get a little larger. You know, you can go inside and do other things while you're waiting for, for the wood to ignite. Because we're flipping this meat so frequently, it's not really cooking on the inside. Uh, we're just building a crust on the outside. If you wanted this meat to actually cook on the inside, then you would have to just leave it for a bit longer before flipping it. So like leave it for a minute or two, flip it, leave it for a minute or two. When we're flipping every 20 to 30 seconds, we're giving this side time to cool off. So only the outside is really getting heated, building a nice crust while retaining the raw inside. So we've got some nice brown color. I don't really want more than that. It's not gonna you know, build much more flavor if we, we cook it for longer, really. And then you, just get, you can see the wood is still not really burned off, so I'm gonna kill the gas and we'll have some wood for tomorrow. All right, boys and girls, so we have our beef belly. I like heating on a cutting board. Some of you guys may have seen me do this in the past. It's a lot easier to cut meat on a flat surface than it is to do on a bowl. As always, when we cut into the meat, the internal temperature is completely raw. So some of you, you know, nut jobs, whatever raw primal guys might be like, oh, he's eating cooked food. But th this meat is essentially completely raw on the inside. All we're really getting here is uh, more calories and overall fat soluble vitamins. You know, since the meat is high quality and grass fed, all of the fat, all of the protein, it's going to have a higher vitamin and mineral content but we're not consuming any specific organs or any specific parts of the animal for a nutrient as we already did that earlier today. Salting ahead of time really makes a big difference in the enjoyability of the meal. You know, just really brings out the flavor of the beef throughout the steak. Uh, the belly is a very flavorful cut. It's not that tender, but if you cook it very rare and slice against the grain, it's, it's I mean, it's it's very good. Even the toughest parts of the animal, when they're kept lightly cooked and cut properly, you could eat them. I'm feeling kind of full, and the reason my food volume isn't as high as you would think is because of the quality. Our bodies crave nutrients. When we consume organ meats, you know, the brains, the liver, that stuff we had earlier, high quality beef fat, it is so nutrient dense that it is satiating our body's appetite. When you consume a lesser quality meat, you consume more of it. You know, so would you rather spend the same amount of money on three to four pounds of grain-fed beef or just eat two pounds of grass-fed beef? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And if you haven't tried that, I encourage you to do so. Get some high quality beef fat, get some meat, try it out, compare it to a grain-fed day of eating, and you'll be pleasantly surprised that once you incorporate organ meats, once you incorporate high quality nutrient-dense foods into your diet, uh, you're satiation is going to be much better, you're gonna be consuming less food, and you're gonna be feeling uh, more optimal in general. Uh, we are looking to carry beef belly on Frankie's Free Range Meat. It is a bit difficult to source, uh, so we should have it by the end of the summer. Uh, so if you guys are not able to get beef belly, uh, we will be providing that for you guys, 100% grass-fed and grass-finished. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, let me know how you like this if you'd like to see uh, other things in the future, maybe how I can do this better. As I just mentioned, Frankie's Free Range Meat is providing you with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. Go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com, check out what we have to offer, and if you want to support the future vision of things like raw dairy, corn free and soy free eggs, our mission is to get you guys healthy at the most affordable price online. Thanks again for joining me guys and enjoy the rest of your day.